Hi there, I'm John Hyam, Mayor of the Town of Sackville, New Brunswick. And I'm David Kogan, Mayor of the Town of Amherst, Nova Scotia. We were just asked to talk a little bit about climate change adaptation uh, in small town Canada. And we're about 10 kilometers across uh, from each other at the isthmus that joins New Brunswick and Nova Scotia. And um, we uh, have both, uh, in both our towns, we've, we've been working on our own climate change adaptation approaches. Uh, but in the last little while, we've had an opportunity to work more together on some larger issues, which has led us back to some of our more local. Well, that's right. The rising sea levels, the Bay of Fundy, will ultimately breach the Acadian dikes in the Isthmus of Chignecto and threaten a good proportion of both of our towns. So there's a lot at risk with rising sea levels as a result of climate change. Those dikes were made uh, about 250 years ago by the Acadians, by hand. And uh, many of them are still basically the dikes we have today. The only backup that's changed has been CN Rail has, uh, has an elevated railway that is now uh, acting as the backup dike. Um, we're, we've been lucky at this point, but all of the data is suggesting that uh, it's not going to be long before even the CN Rail is going to be bre breached and broached. So we approached the uh, federal um, representatives in our areas, the two MPs, Bill Casey in Nova Scotia and Dominic LeBlanc in New Brunswick. And uh, we've written to the Federal Minister of Transportation for Structure Renewal. And there now has been an approach by both provinces, provincial government, to the federal government. And they've just announced funding a study to see what can be done to protect this area. And the federal government is kicking in $350,000, while each of our provinces is kicking in another 175000 So we're pleased with that development. Um, it was, a, it was a very interesting approach that we had to do. It really was that we have absolutely no jurisdiction over the dikes, no ownership, uh, no maintenance program whatsoever. And no money. And no money. And so we adopted uh, that we would coordinate together on, on raising it politically, and uh, the result worked out quite well. So we're now at the stage where that money has been announced, and uh, they're about to start a consultation, which is also important. We don't want to be left out of, of how they might decide uh, what types of solutions there are. Um, so we're looking forward now to being able to influence some of the decisions they're going to make uh, to address the flooding threat. It became very apparent that this was more than a local issue for our two communities. And if and when the Isthmus of Chignecto truly floods, it would be permanent and it would virtually cut off Nova Scotia from mainland Canada. The amount of uh, commercial traffic through the rail line and the highway from Nova Scotia to the rest of mainland Canada is substantial. It's approximately $50 million a day. So it's a very, very important issue locally, provincially, and nationally. And we, were, uh, we stressed that point, and uh, David did a great job of uh, letting Halifax Chamber of Commerce and the, the port understand what the impact would be, as did our local MPs. So we're really pleased with that, and, and it just shows that uh, we probably learned locally from a lot of our local volunteers who create interest in some of these issues, and then the towns have picked that up. And I think in this case, the towns have, have generated provincial and federal interest in what's really a, a national and even international issue if this floods in this area. So it all comes back down to those local people who start these things, and then our role is to, to articulate that and try to bring it to action. So they tell us that uh, the municipal level of government has enormous influence and we're finding out that it might be true, might be true. <laughs> we hope it is. And, and that's, that's our story. story.